Everybody remember, I, I mentioned something about this to you uh, two weeks ago, I think. Maybe, maybe it wasn't quite that long. I don't know. Somewhere in there. Somewhere close. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house and into thine bedchamber and upon thy bed and into the house of thy servants and upon thy, th thy people and into thine ovens and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants. Whew. Wonderful, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for tonight. Father, I thank you that we, we hear you. We hear your voice. Lord, we hear your voice. I thank you, Lord, that your people have ears to hear what you have to speak to them in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. You can sit. I mentioned this portion of Scripture to you not long ago, and, and I, it seems like I've been coming back to it ever since then because... Because Pharaoh did, of course, refuse. He did, of course, refuse. And it says, and it, and it says, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying to Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. <laughs> Whoo! And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up, covered the land of Egypt. Whew. Boofy. I don't know about you, but the frogs really aren't all that cute. You know, really they're not. And if I had to share my bed with them, I'd really be upset. Cause, and, and I don't even want, I don't want them anywhere near my food. I don't even eat frog legs. Come on now. And especially I don't want to eat them if they're attached to a frog. <laughs> Anyways, God spoke this. And of course, Pharaoh is in rebellion, extreme rebellion. And so he didn't pay attention. So God said, okay, do it. And so the frogs came. Well, then uh, Pharaoh told the, the magicians to do their thing. And it says the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. What? So if you, if you stop and think about this, you already have trouble. There's trouble in the camp. You understand that? You got trouble in your house. Trouble in your job, trouble in your business, trouble everywhere you turn, you got trouble. I mean, it's even in your bed, you got trouble. So, you start trusting in man, and what do you get? More trouble. Well, that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? You think? Well, just let me, let me just re redo this here. Um... How many of you try to fix your own problems? It's no wonder you get more problems then. Because they didn't get rid of any. They brought more frogs. Well, that makes sense. If I'm already in trouble, I want some more. I mean, pile it on. I've got it in my house. I've got it in my yard. I've got it on my car. I've got it in my business. I've got it in my house, in my kitchen, in my food, in everything. I got trouble. And so let's go out and get some more. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that makes such crazy sense if, in case you're interested. But how many people, how many believers right now are doing the very same thing? They get in trouble, and instead of trusting God, they go instantly to the first loan officer they find, go to the first banker, go to the first lawyer, go to the first doctor, go to the first something to get your problems fixed. Hello, Hello church. And then wonder why, I don't know why that didn't work. I worked so hard at that. Really? Well, I can tell you why it didn't work, because you're trying to fix a spirit problem with a, with a flesh answer. You can't mix them. They don't, they don't mix well. Right. Okay. I guess we've made that point then, right? 
<laughs> then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. Moses said, Well, Pharaoh, glory over me. When shall, when shall I entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses that they may remain in the river only? Okay, Pharaoh, I got you. I heard what you said. When do you want me to ask God to take them away? When is it you'd like this to change? Tomorrow. What? And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. Amen. Now wait a second. I want us to bring this over to where we, where we relate. Because there's something wrong with this whole thing. You do get that, right? If you had 6,000 frogs in your house, in your little room only, in your kitchen, for instance, if you had 6,000 frogs in there, you're going to tell me that if somebody said, when would you like me to ask God to take them away? You'd say, tomorrow? Well, I want to know then why it is you decide to wait for God to do everything else. You'll say, I want to be, I want to be rid of unforgiveness next week. Or I want to wait, I, no, I'm, wait, I'm going to wait just a little while longer. I wondered what it was wrong with my sister when she, I said, well, when do you want to be rid of, when do you want to be rid of the flu? Tomorrow? Well, what's wrong with today? Why would you want to wait, why would you want to wait to get rid of unforgiveness till tomorrow? Why would you want to wait to get rid of a, of a bad thing in you? Why do you want to wait on anything? When God wants you to wait on something, you throw a hissy fit. And now when God's saying, listen, when would you like me to do this? Ted, when would you like your feet to stop hurting, honey? You want to wait six weeks? That's fine with me. Be it, so be it unto you. Yeah, so, but, and if, but if, you were, if you were on fire, you wouldn't say tomorrow. You'd say, ten minutes ago, please. But instead, there's he saying, tomorrow. And Christians are doing the same thing. Yeah. How long, how, when would you like me to entreat God to take this sin out of your life? Tomorrow. Give me one more night. <laughs> well, that's just the way it sounds. Amen. That's just exactly what it sounds like. If you need healing, you don't want it tomorrow, do you? Well, if you, if you have financial problems, do you want that tomorrow too? Well, I suppose we had to wait till the banks open. No, we don't. God's not limited to the banks. God's not limited to the doctors. He's not, he doesn't have any limits or any bounds. But believers stand and, and say, listen, I'll, I'll get rid of it one of these days. One of these days, one more night with the frogs. You're shaking your head like you don't believe that. But it's truth. There are, people, there are people sitting in pews right now, maybe even some in this room, that have not, have not asked God to take something away simply because they'd like to keep it one more day. Or they don't want to let go of their vendetta for another day. Don't want to let go of unforgiveness for at least another day. Let me just tell you this though. You may not have tomorrow. You may not have tomorrow to wait to. So you may want to think about this. And you may want to think. Where am I going to get help? When do you want me to entreat the Lord for you? It better be today instead of waiting until tomorrow. Because you're not promised tomorrow. None of us are. None of us are. And therefore we need to get, get things together today. And how about this? When do you want to receive help from God anyway? Tomorrow. No. If God's going to help me, I'd just soon he'd do it now. Yeah. I don't want to wait till tomorrow. Yeah. I'm tired of waiting. Amen. In fact, I don't want to wait on anything if I don't have to. I'm, I'm an impatient little person. 
If you're going to do something nice for me, do it. <laughs> Don't be waiting till tomorrow. <laughs> Crap, you may, be, you may be dead tomorrow and I won't get it. <laughs> I may be dead tomorrow and I won't get it. So I'd rather you do it today. If you're going to say something nice or decent about me, say it today. Don't wait till tomorrow. And if you're going to say something good about someone else, say it today. Don't wait till tomorrow. I'm going to send them a card one of these days. No, don't wait because you don't know what, you, what time you have. Amen. How many of you said, I'm going to go over and pray for them one of these days? And they were dead before you got there. Yeah. One more day with frogs. You just, need to, you just need to acknowledge that procrastination isn't always a good thing. <laughs> Sometimes you need to get, get over your bad selves and, and remember that God wants to do it now. Tomorrow, be it according to thy word. But believers, believers right now, those of you that are in trouble, those of you that have stuff that's, that's bugging you, you really ought to, let, you ought to let God do something with it today. You ought to let God do something with it now instead of waiting on something else to hit. You know, um, I want to go back to, um, well, let's do, let's do Matthew 24. That'll, that'll do for the moment, won't it? I think so. Yes, yes, yes. In verse 37, it says, But as the, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. <laughs> For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the, into the ark. Yes. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also be shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Yeah. They were eating and drinking and doing just like everyone is doing right now. Hello. Acting like nothing mattered. Having no no great drive to do anything. It was one of those wish I had that right now. One of, those, one of those days when somebody will do it. Everybody thought somebody would. <laughs> so nobody did it. <laughs> right now the church is in a place of complacency. And slothfulness. Because it just doesn't matter. Let me, let me just ask you, let me just ask a couple questions. I'm not directing them at any one in particular, but just, just in general. When was the last time you prayed for this body because there are no children here? Because the children's ministry died? When was the last time you prayed for music ministry in this body? And I know it gets done on Saturday. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you as an individual. Because do you notice? Do you notice? Do you care? And it's not just here. It's all over. It's out there too. Outside these walls. Because the people of the body of Christ are a, are a me. All about me. They want, they want to be ministered to never wanting to minister to anyone. And if you don't get up and determine that you're going to be something in the body of Christ, the church is going to die. Because there has to be another generation raising up to take your place. You're not going to live forever here, I'm sorry to tell you. I, I know, it's a real shock to some of you. But there has to be another generation that's raising up and, and I'm not saying that this is the truth. I'm not saying God revealed it. I'm not saying anything of the sort. But do you, do you see that perhaps a lack of interest or a lack of caring 
causes things to die? Do you know that? Do you think, has it ever occurred to you that that's what happened to our children? Our children's ministry? Does it ever occur to you that, that, that there's, there's, a, there's a reason for the things that go on? Well, the people with kids just left. Why? There had to be a reason. Well, the buck stops here. Yes, it does. That's why I'm talking to you. But have you interceded and asked God about these things? And have, do you ask God for a place to minister? A life to minister to? One to one. Don't have to, you don't have to be on a platform to minister to people. Have you asked God to give you a place to minister? Or are you so busy asking God to give me, give me, give me. That you don't have time to do for others. You need to be asking him for appointments for ministry so that you can reach out and touch the lives of those around you. You know, Stan, I don't have time. Don't have time? Well, I hope you haven't told Jesus that. He's liable to be upset <laughs> that you don't have time. He, take, he made time for us. So we have to, we have to do the same. Somewhere along the line, you have to understand that you can, you can go about your daily living. You don't understand? I have to have a life. Really? Where, when did you get that? I thought your life was bought with a price. Does, you think that's only for pastors? Well, me and Bob are just, just scrunched. I don't know. That, the rest of them are loose and we're just the only ones that are supposed to be we're the only ones that are supposed to be here every service we're the only ones that are supposed to be excited we're the only ones that are supposed to be doing I don't think so that's not what my word says I thought it was I thought this was about sheep begetting sheep and caring for one another well you have to make time to do that well I have kids really I do too. In fact, I have grandkids and great-grandkids. And they all call me aunt. Because I'm the youngest grandma they've got. No, they don't all call me aunt. They call me grandma, of course. But, but the point is, we all have families. We all have things that are, we need to take care of. But somewhere, it's got to be different than just the days of Noah. Because if you get caught while you're eating and drinking and giving in marriage and marrying and doing whatever it is you're doing, 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 what happens when, what happens when the storm comes? When the storm comes, you're going to miss the boat because <laughs> God's going to shut the door and you'll be standing on the outside saying, let me in. Because see, somewhere God's saying, I will be, I will be the Savior of your soul. I will be the one that gets, carries you to safety. I'm the one that's going to carry you away and let you be one of those that are spared while everyone else is drowning. Because there's going to come a day when that does happen. You know that, right? In fact, there are days right now that seem that way. How many of you have felt like you were drowning in the problems and the things that have come? I don't know, if, if you aren't, you better praise God and be on your face interceding because I'll tell you, there's those of us that are. And, and it's not a funny place to be. But we do know one thing. He is the anchor of my soul and I know that as long as he holds the key, I'm right where I need to be. But are you right where you need to be? That's the next thing. And if you, if, you, if you are, that's great. If you're not, this is not for condemnation. This is to say, hey, church, it's time to wake up. I understand that disciple class was about enthusiasm and, 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 being, and being, want, wanting to worship. How many of you... Well, I've been wanting to not ask that question, I guess. I know that everyone in here loves worship. If you, would, if you don't love worship, you are in the wrong church. Because this church is filled with worshipers, period. Because we, we're going to worship, and, and I don't care if we don't preach the word, we're going to worship. Because if we don't worship, I can't preach anyway. 
We have to touch God before we can preach. We have to touch God before we can minister. We have to touch God in order to do anything that we get done, you know. That's how it is. We have to have a connection with Him at all times. When the rains began to fall and the ark shifted off its, whatever, it wasn't a foundation, little boards, whatever it was that was holding it up, the supports were loosened. Lordy, lordy, lordy. Noah and his family were safe on the inside. Lord had already shut the door. Noah didn't shut the door. The Lord shut the door. Get them safe. Draw them unto me and let them be safe. Bring them in. Let me be safe. One thing I know for sure, if I call on his name, I'm safe. May not feel safe, may not look safe, but I'm safe. Hallelujah. I am safe. As the waters rose up, the people were outside and they were screaming for help, screaming for deliverance, and it was too late. We don't any of us want to be too late. And say, so, you know, I am already saved. Thank you very much. I know you are. I know you are, but I want you to be safe. I want you to be delivered from all your enemies. And don't tell me you don't have enemies now that you're saved. I have more enemies now than I ever had. I'm crying out loud. Come on, people. <laughs> I mean, there was only one way of escape. And God was it. And today there's only one way. There's only one way. Go to Acts chapter 4. There's only one way. You know how glorious it is to know that we have a place of refuge? If there is one thing that will get me out from under, and sometimes you get underneath stuff, you know, get, you get underneath, and you can't get up for the weight of it. But one thing that will bring us out of there is to recognize that He is. And once I start saying He is, He is my shield. He's my buckler. He's my strong tower. He's my deliverer. He's my healer. You start bringing those things forth, I'm telling you the Spirit of God will raise up on the inside. You will come out from under it. You will. You start, you start repeating what God is in your life and who He is to you. He is the God of my salvation and I know that. I don't know a lot of things, but I know that one. Verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So if we call on the name of Jesus, the ark's coming. <laughs> ark's coming to pick you up. Hallelujah. Well, you have to know. You have to know. We don't have to. See, we were talking about tolerating junk, tolerating frogs, whatever problems you have. But there's a place for us. There's a place of deliverance for us. There's a place of safety for us. How many of you know that people can be hateful? Do you know any hateful people? I mean to tell you, people just be hateful because they can. People get, people get so that they just treat you ugly because they can do it. And you think, I'd just like to slap them into the middle of next week. And, and you're not allowed to do that, of course. So instead, you have to just back down and hold your peace. But if you call on the name of the Lord, <laughs> He is my justifier. He is my justifier. Because if you hold your peace and stay right, He comes. He comes. He, it may not be today, but He's coming. And He's going to justify. And He's going to change the way people do. And He will make even your enemies to be at peace with you. If your ways please Him, He will make all your enemies to be at peace promised it he already promised I've watched him do it time after time after time glory thank you Lord and I thought I had to do it myself at one point finally got over spending one night with the frogs you know hallelujah didn't want to spend any more time there for a moment glory yes well it makes a difference you have to know that it makes a difference I'm going back to Psalms for a minute because I can <laughs> Are you taking cough syrup, girl? No. You're coughing better already. 28. Psalms 28. Verse 7. Yeah. 
says the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth. And with my song will I praise him. Hallelujah. Got to know. Got to know the Lord is their strength and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Hallelujah. How many anointed people have I got in here? Every one of you are anointed people. He is your saving strength. Did you see that? Saving strength of his anointed. Praise God. That's who you are. That's what's available to you right now. It's yours right now. Psalms 40. And if you're having a difficult time, this is for you. Psalms 40, verse 17 says, but I am poor and needy. Yeah? How many poor and needy? Well, sometimes you are. Doesn't, you, you, I mean, you can still be serving God, love God and everything, but sometimes you're in need. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Whoa, praise your name, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, my God. <laughs> yeah, don't wait till tomorrow, God. I don't want to spend one more night with the frogs. I want you to come today. Make no tarrying. Please show up today. Thank you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Yes, come quickly. I'm not in Psalms now. I left there. I have gone on to other places. <laughs> I'm moving right along here. Just a minute. I got to go back. I know what Psalms was. 66. Psalm 66 what? Psalm 66, verse 16. Come and hear, all you that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away from my prayer, nor his mercy from me, and won't. His mercy, his mercy is new. Every day, every day he wants to do. Every day he has more compassion. Every day he has more mercy. Every day he wants to do more. Every day, right now, God wants to do more than has ever been done. Hallelujah. So go to Hebrews 13. Yes. Hebrews 13 verse 6 says, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. We're not calling on magicians. We're not, ta we're not calling on man. We're not, we're not giving doctors and lawyers and bankers and all of that stuff. We're not giving all of them credit for what's being done. God is my helper. He is my helper, period. He is my helper. And therefore, I have nothing else to fear. You have, nothing to, you have nothing to fear or nothing to lose by believing God. Absolutely. It's, this, is where, this is where your help is. This is where, where everything begins and ends is with God. Because in Him we live and move and have our being. Every child of God. Every child of God. So whatever your need is, whatever your, whatever your hurt is, whatever your wound is, whatever thing is keeping you in bondage, whatever yoke is upon you can be broken today. You don't have to spend one more night, not one more night with the frogs. You can, you can decide today is the day that we entreat God. Today is the day that we entreat Him and ask Him to help us now. Hallelujah. Not next year. Hallelujah. How many of you have thought, well, I brought this on myself? You probably did. Most of the things that we do, we brought on ourselves. I mean, come on. Yeah, surely not. <laughs> Maybe not you, but I know where my stuff came from, or most of it anyway. We, we do things that just don't make any sense and then wonder why we got in problems. I mean, I don't know how that works, but it, it just does. And, and so you think, well, because I told you, I used to go barefoot outside in the winter. And my mom would scream and yell at me. And then you, then, then, see? And now you have a cold. That's just what you get. 
going outside without your head covered, going outside barefoot, don't wear a coat, there you go. It doesn't make any difference. You know what? God said, well, what? I can't help you then? He couldn't help me as long as I decided he couldn't. He couldn't do a thing as long as I said, no, it's all my fault. I'll just sit here in it. I'm going to be punished. I'm going to be punished. I'll just sit here and punish me. One more night. One more night with the frogs. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> maybe, maybe tomorrow. Do you re does anybody remember Steve Blair? He used, to, he used to tell me without any, without any qualms. He would say, well, I screwed up. And he said, now I know I'm not going to be able to hear God for another month. And I said, what? Because he actually really believed that. It took me six months to get him past that. Get him past thinking that God would abandon him for six months because he said something stupid or did something dumb. If that was the case, most of us wouldn't be talking to God most of the time. I mean, come on. We'd have to just, oh, well, we'll just write him a letter one of these days. But instead, God's saying, yes, but I'm still here. Yeah, but God, I was outside and didn't wear a coat and my, then it was raining and got my little head wet and now I'm, uh, now I'm sick. That's what happens. God said, and I'm not able to heal that? Oh, yeah, you're able. I just didn't think I better ask because I was dumb. I saved you when you were dumb. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, that's true. He protects the ignorant and delivers them and helps them and restores them. So if you're ignorant or you've done something dumb, you can expect God to restore you because that's who he does it for. That's what he wants to do. He wants to show everybody that he's the God of your salvation. He is the God of your salvation. Hallelujah. I want you to stand to your feet with me tonight. We're going we're gonna to pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, O oh God. Lord is so good.